Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video I'm going to be talking about my 12 favorite debuts of 2020. <music> We are continuing on with my end of year series best of lists and today I wanted to talk about some of the really amazing debut novels that came out in 2020. I feel like 2020 was the year of so many incredible debuts. Honestly it was kind of hard to narrow this down and there's a lot of great debuts that I didn't get a chance to mention here but of the books that I read this year, these are my 12 favorite debut novels by new authors. We are going to start at number 12 and count down to one. Coming in at number 12 is one that was a little bit of a surprise to me. I didn't have a lot of high expectations going in and I ended up really loving this book. It is Sia Martinez and The Moonlit Beginning of Everything by Raquel Vasquez Jaliland. She has written poetry before but this was her debut novel. It's a YA story that's a really interesting genre blend. It's part hard-hitting contemporary, part sci-fi, and I just really really loved it. I thought the writing itself was really beautiful and poetic. I loved the topics that it was tackling and the way that it was choosing to do things. I thought it was really interesting. It's kind of like hard-hitting contemporary, dealing with undocumented immigrants and grief and a coming-of-age story mixed with aliens and in some ways it's kind of a love letter to the X-Files but linguistically it's also playing with the language that we use. It's about aliens and aliens can either mean beings from outer space or aliens can be language we use surrounding undocumented immigrants and I just thought this was really smart, really beautifully written. I loved it and I think it's a really strong debut. Number 11 is another YA debut that I loved. Not everybody loved this book as much as I did but I was a huge fan of it. This is The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. I thought this was such an ambitious book in terms of the number of themes that it was tackling and I just really appreciated how it was all done, how everything came together. I loved the characters and I just thought the premise of this was really cool. It follows a teen boy who's gotten internet famous from his citizen journalism videos. He's gay, he lives in New York City, but everything changes for him when they find out that his dad has been accepted into a space program and they have to drop everything and move to Texas. Not only that, he's supposed to stop doing his videos because there's a reality TV show that has contracts to follow everything going on with the space program that his dad's involved in. So part of this has to do with the good and the bad of social media and television. It's tackling a lot of stuff about that. It's kind of about the space race but in a new version where they're planning a mission to Mars and it's also a love story and a coming of age story where our main character ends up forming a relationship with the son of one of the other astronauts. And I just thought this was really wonderful. I also loved the mental health representation that you see here. The main character's boy friend deals with chronic depression and there's a lot of great conversations that happen surrounding that of the fact that depression is not a thing he can fix. It's a thing that the boyfriend has to cope with and deal with somewhat on his own. I thought a lot of those conversations were great. It's also pro-therapy. He's got a mom who deals with anxiety and depression and there's marital issues between his parents. But one of the things I love about this is we see them go to therapy and his mom finds ways to cope that make things better for her and his parents learn how to communicate better with each other and I loved seeing that. That's not something you always see in YA books and I thought it was fantastic so really loved this as a debut. Excited to read more from Phil Stamper going forward. Big fan of The Gravity of Us. Number 11 is a book that you've seen on I think at least one other list and this is a controversial one. This is one that not everybody seems to like but I was a big fan of it. It is The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood. This is a debut debut epic adult fantasy following an orc priestess who was raised in this kind of cult to be the bride of the god that they serve where she would die but instead of doing that she runs away and becomes an assassin. It's also got a super slow burn sapphic relationship in it and I just really enjoyed this. I liked the characters, I thought the world was really interesting and I was very engaged with it so I know this is not everybody's cup of tea maybe because the pacing is a little bit weird like there's multiple mini plot lines that happen through the book and yeah like I see a lot of people not loving it as much as I did but I was a huge fan so this is my number 10 
favorite debut of the year. Number nine is also one of my most surprising books of the year. This is a debut indie published fantasy romance that I accepted for review and completely fell in love with. That is Rain and Ruin by J.D. Evans. This is so freaking good and I've had a lot of people come back to me and saying they picked it up after my recommendation who also were like, oh my gosh, you were right. It's really good. And I'm like, I know. That's why I'm telling people to read it. It's really good. This is a nice book too because it really straddles that line between fantasy and romance and it's a great crossover book. So if you're a fantasy reader who's interested in getting into romance, this might be a great one to try. If you're a romance reader who's interested in getting into more high fantasy, this is also a great one to try and I love the fact that it kind of walks that line. This is also available on Kindle Unlimited or was last I checked and it's the first in an entire series. I haven't continued with the series yet but I really want to. I love it. It's got a really really fantastic slow burn romance at the center of it. It's got political intrigue, it's got magic, it's got an interesting world and one thing that I think is kind of cool is the author was in the military for 10 years and I think that really reflects on the page here. The way that she writes like battle sequences and stuff like that. I, I think you can kind of tell that she actually like knows what she's talking about. Loved Rain and Ruin. I think it's an incredible debut and I hope more people will go check this one out. Coming in at number eight is a very hard hitting YA mystery thriller. That is This Is My America by Kim Johnson. Um, I, I think I said this, I guess I said this in my members only video um, for my, my mysteries and thrillers where they get to see my favorites. This was one of my favorite mystery thrillers of the year. But I also think it's a really incredible debut. And one thing that's interesting about this book is I see people talking about it more as hard hitting contemporary, which it kind of is, but it's actually a a mystery thriller. Like there's a mystery, the main character is investigating that mystery. And um, so, you know, like give credit where credit is due just because it's tackling difficult issues like social justice and racism doesn't mean it can't also be a mystery thriller and that is what this book is. It follows a teen girl whose dad is on death row for a crime he didn't commit and every week she's been writing letters to this organization asking them to take her dad's case. While that's happening her brother goes on the run after being accused of killing a white girl at their high school and she is convinced he didn't do it and decides to do some investigating to clear the name of both her dad and her brother. This is definitely a very very intense book. It's dealing with a lot of difficult things like racism and police brutality and structural racism and problems with the criminal justice system um, and yeah there, there's a lot in here but it is absolutely phenomenal easy five stars and uh, definitely one of the best debuts that I read this year so this Is My America is, I think, what, what am I at, number eight? I think number eight. <laughs> Highly recommend This Is My America. I think it is well worth your time. Wow, we're just gonna approve everything today. Thanks, Night Galley. <laughs> Coming in at number seven is a YA sci-fi debut that I was a huge fan of. This is Goddess in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson. Oh man, this book had so many good twists and turns. It had a really great premise and I loved the way it executed on it. Um, I, I kind of wish I'd seen more people picking it up who are actually into science fiction. The basic idea is it follows a teen girl who is put into cryogenic stasis where she's supposed to travel with her family to a new colony on another planet and wake up after a hundred years. But when she wakes up it's a thousand years later. Everyone she knows is gone and the people there think that she's a goddess because things have devolved where they no longer understand how science and technology work and they view it more as magic and so this has romance, it's got political intrigue, it has like huge twists throughout the book, like really really good ones where I was like what? Oh my gosh! And um, like a big twist at the end too where I was like oh I can't wait for book two so I'm really excited for book two which we're getting this year. It's the first in a duology. One thing that I really appreciated about this that seems to be hit or miss for people but I really liked it is the author created kind of a dialect of English for the 1000 years into the future, imagining how English in common usage might change with time. I really liked it. I found it to be really immersive and not that hard to get into, but some people seem to have really not 
liked it and thought it was confusing so like really depends I guess on who you are as a reader but I thought this was phenomenal really strong debut and I'm excited to see some cool sci-fi stuff coming out in YA. Number six is a really strong YA fantasy debut that is Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuego. This is a multi POV African inspired YA fantasy story that was just so good. I loved all of the characters and the diversity and the richness of the world building. It's got really good pacing and the plot is super interesting. It's got political intrigue. Uh, I was a huge fan of this. I'm really excited to see what we get in book two and I hope it stays as strong as this first book but this was a really incredible debut and um yeah, I've been recommending it to people and most people seem to really be loving it. Number five is a book that may not be everybody's cup of tea, but it was totally my cup of tea, and that is Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. I talked about this a lot more in my favorites video of the year, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I just loved this. I had such a good time with it. It's all about the atmosphere and the angst and all the vibes of like Phantom of the Opera meets Moulin Rouge. Um, I was a really big fan of this. I know it didn't work for everybody. It is not a plot driven book, so if you need a lot of plot that moves really quickly, um, if you like things to be easily explainable, like this may not be for you, but I loved it. Cannot wait for book two in the duology. Number four is is I think one of the most underhyped books of the year because I loved it and I have not seen anybody else talk about this book so I'm hoping that all my end of your favorites videos will make lots of you go and try this book. It is Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. It's a debut YA dark fantasy. Um, in fact this is like this is a trend I'm starting to see. You didn't used to see much dark fantasy in YA but this is definitely a dark YA fantasy. It's super fast paced. I devoured this really quickly and it ends on a cliffhanger so I really really wanted book two. <laughs> um, but I loved it. I think it's so interesting. The world building is really interesting. It's a love letter to unlikable female characters and our heroine is like not really a heroine per se. Like she makes lots of bad choices and isn't necessarily a good person but I loved her. She's very prickly. There's also a super super slow burn enemies to lovers sapphic romance in this book. Um, I think some people were a little bit disappointed based on reviews I saw that thought that the romance was going to be more heavily centered in here. It's more of a side thing and it doesn't really develop much until the very end. So I'm guessing we'll see more of that in book two. Um, but I loved everything about this and uh, yeah go check it out. I thought it was great. Number three is my favorite 2020 romance and it is a traditionally published debut. So this author has previously self-published things or indie published things but this is the first time she's had a traditionally published book out so I'm putting it on this list. That of course is Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. I loved this. It's got fandom elements and fan fiction and it's got great fat representation. This was so my jam. I loved it. I gush about it all the time. I've made lots of people pick it up and like everybody else mostly seems to love it too which makes me really really happy. Um, so yeah I want to read more of Olivia Dade's backlist because I know she has indie published stuff but traditionally published debut and I can't wait to see more from her. We are down to my top two and I don't think this should come as a surprise. My number two slot and my pick for best YA debut of the year is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This is another one I feel like I keep talking about so much but I'm gonna say it again. It is phenomenal. I had no complaints with this. I thought everything was done so well. can't believe this is a debut and it's a book that uses the Arthurian mythology and legends as the basis for its magic system and as the basis for a secretive magical organization. Um, this I'm calling Cassandra Clare meets Octavia Butler because it has some similarities to the Shadowhunter universe by Cassandra Clare in terms of the type of fantasy story that it is but done better and similar to Octavia Butler in that it's tackling a lot of really big issues and doing them very well. Things like grief and racism and generational trauma and misogyny and um, there's just like so much richness to this. It's fun and well paced and has plenty of action and romance and secrets and twists and turns but it also has a lot of really great conversations that are happening. So I loved everything about this. It was phenomenal easily my pick for number two best debut of 2020. And lastly the book that is also my favorite book of the year that I loved a whole lot and my pick for best debut of the year is The Year of the Witching by Alexis 
Henderson. This is a phenomenal adult horror novel that's got gothic witchy vibes to it. It follows a young woman who is coming of age in this town run by a kind of cultish religious organization and there are witches, there's a dark and creepy forest, there's traditional horror elements. The thing that like made this an elevated book for me, made it one of my favorite books of the year, is you slowly come to realize that the true horror Despite all these regular horror things, the true horror here is the misogyny, the abuse of power, and the religious abuse that is taking place behind the scenes. This is one that has just stuck with me. I really want to do a reread before the second book comes out. You d I didn't even know there was going to be a second book. This totally stands on its own, but I'm excited we're getting more. Really loved this, thought it was phenomenal. Favorite debut of 2020 in a year full of really fantastic debuts. There you have it. Those are my picks for the top 12 debuts of 2020. Those were my favorites of the ones that I read. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And obviously for your question of the day, let me know what was one of your favorite debuts that you read this year. Is there something that wasn't on this list maybe that you thought was just really, really a standout? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.